Hi everyone, welcome. What you see here are a couple of red wiggler worm bins that have just passed six months in service. So to me, you know, 182, maybe 183 on a leap year would be considered in my mind a six month in service. And that happened in these bins only a couple days ago. And over that time, over those six months in service, we've fed them 15 times and the last of those feedings occurred 11 days ago and I'm curious to see how they're doing now because besides getting fed last time we checked in we made the decision at that point to add these plastic coverings up until then these newspapers that you see right here were the only coverings that these systems had but it did start to seem like it might be beneficial to guard against drying while during the summertime, it seemed like we had some fairly uh, humid times over a few weeks where systems were simply unable to lose any of their moisture to evaporation due to the concentration of moisture in the air. We're now definitely beyond that really humid time of year and things are cooling off and at the same time they're drying off. And well, looks like the worms sent out a couple scouts to see what it is that's happening here on the top of the plastic, but these little guys seemingly never had the opportunity to report back to the to the mothership of what was going on. Oh, I better fold these plastic sheets in half. You see all those worms hanging out there? On this pink paper, they do sort of blend in, but if I were to just leave these face up the way I did with this other one, they'll start to get dry, the worms will get restless, and they could end up crawling off. Here we've only got a few of them, but they're very tiny in size. I think this way we can just preserve the moisture level for the short period of time that we need to check in and feed them. And, well, we're already two and a half minutes into the video and we haven't even uncovered the system yet. What is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you know why, because I'm, I do spot these worms hanging out on this material, and then I start to think to myself, well, where can I put this so that it'll be safe and not cause the worms to go fleeing for a more comfortable place to be? So that's my only explanation, I think. I'm not trying to intentionally procrastinate, <laughs> I assure you. So... Today's feeding does not include any coffee or coffee filters. So the old coffee filters that seem to have survived are gonna to continue to play the role of feeding zone indicator. As long as we're feeding and we're on that topic, here's what they're getting. A couple banana peels, each system will get a banana peel. And everything else in here is just a, an assortment of, I see asparagus, apple, orange peel, potato peel, maybe strawberry and other things too. This is a pretty nice assortment. And on the side I've got bedding materials we can use. I've got my prepared bedding. I've got some napkins I'd like to do away with. I've got my grit. And the grit that I use is pulverized eggshells. So every time we would come in here with only the paper coverings, the top surface would be fairly dry. And what we're, what we're dealing with now is stuff that's finally able to remain damp enough so that the worms are comfortable being in it. And that was the whole idea because it seems to me like when systems sort of dry off a little bit on the top surface, that's going to result in um, very little, if any, worm traffic out there. Because worms don't like hanging out where it's dry. They're going to tend to stay where it's nice and damp, which is below the surface. But with the plastic, even the top surface is able to maintain a nice moisture level allowing worms to spend time there as well. So it probably amounts to uh, an overall more productive environment. So let's go ahead and dig in. We've kind of scraped around the top surface and confirmed that we've got the moisture that we were anticipating out there. Down in the feeding zone, I did skim through the video from the last check-in and we were very generous with the bedding. I can see a good bit of it still remains. 
kind of making me actually wonder if it all remains, you know. Perhaps there are pieces that have gotten soft enough or broken in enough that the worms were able to just take a little tiny nibble on it. If you were to examine certain pieces really closely, you'd probably see it. But, you know, it's very hard to believe that after 11 days any of these large chunks of cardboard could have just gone from being there to not being there and have been totally consumed. I have a feeling that the stuff just sort of takes a little while until such a time that it suddenly becomes really easy for the worms to work on but when the stuff is freshly placed into the system I suspect that it's the fact that it's kind of sterile and doesn't really have any infiltration of microbes or bacteria or anything like that makes me think that the the worms don't really perceive it as something edible quite yet but I'm sure that happens pretty soon Last time we were following a theme that had already started previous to then, which was to deviate from my tendency to allow certain things to just continue on in the worm bins, untouched and unhelped. And one of the best examples of that is the corn cobs, because most of my systems have corn cobs in them, and very rarely do you see me taking a piece of this stuff and intentionally breaking it up into little pieces. Like even these pieces, now that they're quite capable of being chipped away into little tiny fragments, my typical thing to do would be nothing. Just don't touch them and allow, uh, allow the worm bin to follow its course. But you know what? We've made the decision. <laughs> Perhaps in, in most places, with the exception of just a couple places where I have some sort of little test going on, like in my yellow buckets, I'm testing how corn cobs that had been resting in water for many weeks and soaking um, break down and those things are kind of at that hundred day point at this point um, or thereabouts and they're still holding up but I do remember kind of bumping into a, a chunk of the corn cob over in one of those systems applying a little bit too much force to it and it did crack and then it, um, it fell apart the following check-in as soon as I touched it so that was sort of a uh, a prompted <laughs> breaking down of the material versus it just getting to that stage, falling apart on its own without my help. So let's begin plopping in some of the stuff that we're going to be attempting to do away with today. Besides the kitchen scraps, these are soiled napkins going in dry. So we'll complement that bedding with a little bit of my prepared stuff, which is going in damp. And it is kind of nice to see how the system's moisture level, at least in the sections that we've excavated so far, is seeming to be pretty nice and comfortable, and plenty of worms hanging out in it. So now I've got two more of these napkins. We'll add to the feeding zones. Oops, come back here. Just gonna set them aside briefly while we rest into the feeding zone these lovely morsels of kitchen scraps so here's a uh, apple that I sort of just fanned out into a little they're separate pieces but they're all lined up against each other let's separate stuff there too I mean every chance you have to expose more and more surface area of what you're given to the worms rather than allowing it to remain, you know, obscured from access, I think you benefit, you know. So anything you could break up or chip away at probably benefits in the long run in terms of being broken down in the worm bins. And a lot of these feedings I give the worm bins are so mundane in color, like coffee or potato peels or whatever, but this is a nice, cheery, brightly colored feeding, which is a little bit of eye candy for us in a fairly brown and boring world of worm composting. Well, okay, I take that back. Boring might not be a good word because <laughs> it's very rarely boring. I mean, it was in these bins when I, um, when I checked in on them most recently that I reported to you guys the exodus of worms that I had experienced only a couple days prior so that was not boring to come home and 
shoot down into the wormery, not even intending to do any worm bin maintenance, and then finding a whole bunch of worms on the floor, and then tracking, tracking those little guys back to these two systems here, as well as one other separate system. So something really caused those little guys to freak out and start to want to exit their environments. And a lot of them I was able to rescue, thank goodness. But I also know that a good many of them just had to get swept up, the, swept up off the floor later because they unfortunately didn't make it. So I don't know why that happens. I think it might have had something to do with me leaving the window open. Something environmental, presumably. But I couldn't say for sure because, you know, all my other systems were seemingly unaffected by whatever it is that made these systems totally freak out, cause the worms to start fleeing. You know, I contemplated the idea of somehow adding more moisture to these systems. Just because of the fact that even last time we felt like it was time to add plastic coverings and help the systems preserve their existing moisture, I did wonder if perhaps adding some might be a good idea. It's just a little bit of corn cob, I believe. I figured I would chip away at to stick to my theme here. And I am glad that, oh, look at that, what happened here? Something moist, I can I can feel it. My finger just bumped into something really damp, which must be the reason the worms are hanging out there. And that might be a clue. Might be a clue that they could use a little bit more moisture. So I'm glad to see that our feeding has an assortment of different types of stuff that's gonna probably drop out a good bit of juice as it thaws out and breaks down. All right, well, that's it. I wasn't even watching what was happening here in my hand. I was captivated by the little worm that fell off my hand, but was somehow managing to sit right there and I was wondering if they're going to be able to pull themselves up because I could see a good portion of them dangling down in between the two bins and now that the little guy has dropped off I believe we better go grab them and rescue them because being out on my dry <laughs> tabletop is not going to be healthy for a little wormy like that so I um I did manage to forget to add this additional little chunk of bedding material that I hope, had hoped to break down. It's not even that little. These napkins are pretty huge. So maybe, maybe we'll just use these napkins as an excuse to drop in a little bit of moisture, or maybe not. Maybe we just lay them in and then cover them up. Perhaps there's just enough moisture in the foods below it and in the castings that we're going to cover up with, as well as the moisture that'll be recirculating under the plastic. I think the I think the paper will get a good bit of moisture infiltration and then on top of that hopefully a little bit of worm action too. So here's some more corn cob. We don't have to hunt down and destroy each piece it's just when we bump into it, it seems like a good good idea at this point to start helping the stuff along. So let's really quick do the same thing over here. Just one last little piece of material which I guess the worms would probably perceive as food or bedding in the beginning I never know I would have to treat it as bedding in the beginning but eventually it all turns to food because they'll break it all down but yeah for now I guess that just counts as supplementary bedding all right everyone well I think we're almost at the end those newspapers that were resting out on top, even though they'd been covered with plastic for the past 11 days, did somehow manage to um, avoid getting chewed on too much. Definitely has some worms hanging out on it, but no, no signs of breakdown yet. Sometimes when the moisture starts recirculating underneath the plastic, the, um, the, the paper starts to get so damp that the worms just can't resist nibbling on it. And that'll definitely happen here too, but so far, if there are any signs of it, they're very faint and not able to be perceived by me at least. Not even any rough edges suggest nibbling. <laughs> It'll get there. It'll definitely get there soon. So we'll return everything more or less the way we found it. Take a quick, quick glance over onto the um, 
table over there, make sure no wormies fell off. And I think we're finished with this little guy. Wouldn't want him to end up on the plastic and dry like those other little guys were. And it's unfortunate when it happens, but you know, sometimes the worms get curious, start wandering around, and they find themselves in a place that's too hazardous for them to be. But that's just the game when it comes to raising wormies. <laughs> So that's it everyone. Before I go though, really quick, let me just say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now. <laughs>